question you gave me this morning. What it means to be egoless. It means life. You know, like, like true life. You're not dominated by feelings. Uh, that um, your, your life is not in service to your person. You know? Meaning that uh, uh, for, for most human beings, our life is primarily in service to our person. Like, you know, how we are doing, I'm not well, I need this, I don't have any money. It's all about us, us, us. That is. And um, that is such a. Um, our lives should be for service. Like for, for, it's like one life in service, not to itself really, but to, to life, you know. It can make hundreds of people lift the joy in, of the many of them. If you do it in proper service. A life in service to yourself is only is is, is it's kind of selfish and uh, we recall like uh, so wasteful for so much power is in you. And that power is not for your person, you know. And uh, so to be egoless, um, when when the person wants to be egoless, it's very difficult if the person remains. He's trying to be good, and it's okay. It's it's also a very wide path. Most people, you're told when you read the scripture, love one another and do good to those who do bad things to you and stuff like this. No, and people try. To, to be as loving and as kind as they can be, and it is good. It produces really good results. But there's something sometimes artificial about it, because you're doing it because you're told it should be good. And in a way, we are looking for merits because of it. If I do what is good, I get something. So it's still for ourselves, in, in a sense. No? Um, <clears throat> but when we wake up to the truth, you know that you are the self. The self cares for for everything, for every for everyone. You know, it's different somehow. It's the life is much lighter. Your sense of personal problems just vanish. Like there is no personal problems because actually there's no person to have problems in that way. Things come up, and in life there, maybe someone can say, "I don't like you," and it's kind of felt. And if they if they had a lot of poison inside that feel inside that utterance, you you may feel that sadness, but it will never overwhelm you. you know, something just even you're able to to do the right thing, which is to. To say, you know, you know, God bless you. you know. Sometimes you don't even say it in front of them because you know that might even upset them. But in your heart, you 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 accept like this, you know. and you take out the poison out of yourself because the ego is the poison inside the life of a human being. Mm. It just makes things bad. It uh, it's always selfish. It's always drawing energy to itself all the time. It's always need to be right. It's all of these things. You know, it's very poisonous. But sometimes, not knowing another way, it feels like that is just just how I am. As you begin to wake up to the deeper space of truth behind the the kind of person, and this is for this reason, uh, this is where like self inquiry or the invitation brings you out of that, lifts you out of that space, and into the space behind where there's a field of just pure intelligence, more light, more spacious. You see. You already start to feel happy and light, and in your happiness and your light, you naturally want to do what feels good. You know, it's like what feels good comes naturally inside your heart. What feels um, good, and selfishness just feels it's it's like a a poison that leaves you. So you're not thinking so much in terms of that. You know? When you when you find something. That makes you happy. You want to share it to make as many people happy as possible. When you go through a door into a space. You want to let as many people come to as possible. It's something like that, more. You know? So egolessness is like this, and the more we, um, it's dropping away this heavy cloak of ego of I, me, 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 I, me, my, mine. Uh, are just a much, much greater space. That's why I say you come into the God field, and God field has no jealousy. It has no, you know, all this, all this kind of stuff goes. Selfishness, you know, heavy cravings, all this kind of kind of just just goes. You're in a field that is just naturally um, 
cares, naturally. And even your, everything just gets picked up in it. It's like it takes care of every aspect of your life and the lives of those you love. And, but then where you love don't stop, it keeps expanding more and more. Right? So that's to be, to be without ego. It's the most powerful thing in the whole world. Like ego is the darkest force in the world. And then freedom from ego is the most light and beautiful force in the world. And that is the for me the challenge of living as a human being is to transcend the egoic identity. And uh, but it seems very uh, rare in our world, you know. Because so much is on is put on the person and you know, it's like our first love. And we love that first. But you are meant to love the self, but not the person, the self first. But we tend to love it last. And it is like that, that we first grow up with identity strongly and all me, 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 but we are never happy we like that. We need so many things to matter. We need money, we need friendships, we need partners, we need nice things in order to be happy. Where someone who is free of ego can just be happy, he's just happy anyway. Wherever you put them, they're happy. They're not competitive, they're very broad in their dealings, they always think for the, the, the feelings of others and stuff like that. It's very beautiful. And uh, my wish and prayer is that it just becomes contagious again, just to be happy. You know? That beings just enjoy. You know, when we have like group actions and stuff, people learn to see that they can work together and produce something beautiful. And they love it. When in Montessage and now the climate has become so the vibration has become so much higher, so that the the feeling of love is easy. It's not people are not pretending to love. You know, it's it's kind of genuinely feeling the vibration. Where does vibration come from? It's not we came here and this was a special land and the trees were giving vibration. No, it's we we are bringing the vibration, the living self. You know, by our actions, by our thoughts, by the meditation, by the understanding, by the veneration, the understanding of. And the, the 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 attraction to God or to or to pure consciousness, all of this is lifting the vibration. It's just lifting the vibration, so it becomes palpable. Even people who don't know about these things, when they come, they feel something. Well, I feel good here. I like being here. What are they responding to? They're responding to something in the, vib- the vibration of the place. They probably don't know the philosophy. They don't. It's not important even the philosophy. It's the it is the. The activity of the philosophy, it is the, the, the power of the guidance, accepted. There is no power in the guidance if it is not accepted. When it is accepted, then it, becomes, it wakes up and it starts to move. And then everything, the trees start to pick it up, the earth pick it up, mm-hmm. everything picks it up. You know? That is why in some places you can go and you can feel the, the vibration of the place, even though that person is not there anymore like that. I've been to places like that in India and even in even in Jamaica, even in Bob Marley's house. I felt this vibration actually. I went to his room where his slippers is by his bed and I, just, I wasn't expecting anything like this, but the feeling was so powerful of of love. It was so wonderful. India Gandhi's place and different places I've been in it feel this not so many, but actually quite a few you feel this vibration and uh, it, it lives in the walls. It's even the bricks. They hold the vibration. Everything you go inside, you feel oh, like there was happiness in this house. Uh, some happiness was in this house, and it lives. Even though the people left their bodies, the happiness is inside the house. It's an amazing thing. You know, sometimes the darkness lives in the house also. Mm-hmm. If it carries it, it's like these are the strong energies of uh, attraction, desire, fear, love. These are powerful forces in the human kingdom, and they 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 somehow affects even the the earth. It leaves you know, it leaves that vibration there. So um, sometimes people go to the forest. They say, "Love being in nature," is because it's not polluted by human darkness. You know, mm-hmm. so they feel a bit like, oh, it's empty of that. Just move more into like tree consciousness and land con- earth <laughs> consciousness, and more than that. But when you come to a place where the consciousness as manifest in the human form, because it's so much more rich, more diverse in its expression. If it is pervaded by and imbued with consciousness, oh, 
It's so powerful. Man. This is why, you know, we, like I say, that it was just uh, uh, 2,100 years ago, 2,100 years ago, um, Jesus was here physically in, in, on the earth. And just through one human being, you know, who was um, just uh, embodied embodiment of the God consciousness. And even after he leave his body, 2,100 years later, people are still becoming followers of Christ, or followers of the Buddha, or followers of Krishna. It's like 5,000 years ago, of Rama, many, many thousands of years ago. Why? Because the vibration is, is there when they they hold that. So it's it's a very powerful thing. And that uh, when I used to say that you no know, one human being forgot about themselves, and since then the whole world cannot forget them. That's a very powerful thing. By forgetting themselves, meaning to 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 override the ego, to just don't listen to him. You know, they transcended that. And their influence, their presence, their words and presence, you know, impacted on the lives of millions of beings. So they are examples, and each of these human beings have exactly the same kind of blood type like us, looked at the same moon and the same stars and the same sun just like us. They still had they had appetites, they had they got tired, they they sometimes didn't sleep, they had Friendships that people who hated them and stuff like that, but still they were just glowing in the spirit of truth and the spirit of God. So that gives that that's for me is the fulfilment of a human life to wake up into the the truth of of what you really are and and that that is what God is that you you are inside the God kingdom inside your heart. That is what is. A human being that just merely follows scriptures alone on the surface is not enough. Their life will change; it will impact on the lives of other people, but in a soft way. But the one who who abandons their ego and plunges fully into the God Ocean, this one rises up, you know, and becomes a guide in the world, even if they don't speak. There are some beings who never spoke; they don't speak, speak, but their presence is so powerful because they. It's so much um, inherent in their being, this this presence of God, that people just be in their presence and they're transformed by that. So, for me, that's what it means to be without ego. It's a powerful. It's the most powerful thing in the world. If I were to meet two people, one who has been to Venus and lived there for six months, and one who has just lived in a cardboard box for six months in meditation and God, and who has awakened to something. I'd go there any time and be with him. I don't need to speak to an astronaut in my life, <laughs> you know, because they could just be equally as full of ego. But the one who has transcended ego inside himself, and that, that would be my 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 happy date. I'd rather go sit there and just to be with this, to be in that field of, of beings, even beings who who love God or who are searching for truth. That is the holy company, Sam. Just to be in the company of seekers of truth is called auspicious as well. So I feel that we are um, in the right place by this. You know, that more and more beings are finding uh, true true happiness, not not a trip, you know. Not oh we are gonna conquer the world. No, no, just finding one by one is enough. Finding one by one. And that light, you know. Moving in the world is something, something. Because I don't think the world needs more books about spirituality. Then they need human beings who embody the truth, rather than books that write about the truth. They want to see the the living book. They don't want to see a book of just you know paper. They want to see a book of a human being like them, who, who whose life you know challenges or confronts or reveals something inside themselves. That they can, by meeting someone of that caliber, you know, they already they are, they, are, they can their their being cannot deny that it's meant God. And many times we have heard of stories where people who are confessed themselves, profess themselves to be atheists, have met a being who who has that impact on them. That they know, whoa, this is this is just, I don't know what this is, but 
is causing all these changes inside my heart. And so this is what is it? Because they can't be a true atheist. They cannot be. It doesn't really. It's just a, a strangeness. You know, it just means a depth of ignorance that you don't acknowledge that there is a supreme power that controls and you know determines the order of the universe and cares for things and stuff. It's not human being doing it. It's not human being allowing these trees to grow and to you know sending rain and you know to change the weather and to take care of all the different all the planets in even one solar system. I mean, but of all the solar systems, you know, just. Oh. I cannot even to talk about it makes you feel weak. You know, you can't grasp the the magnificence and the might of that supreme being. And the being is not separate, like as an entity doing the things. It is inside the things itself. You know, it's like a, like a, a God cannot be just a farm, or God is embodied in all farms and beyond them. You see, because the farms are constantly changing because He gives them. The portion of time and, and growth and anything that is growing must be uh, uh, transformative, and changeful, and so on. And, uh, but the God Self is is unchanging and yet manifesting change and uh, taking care of all the different permutations of its expression. It's just uh, sometimes <laughs> I just want to try and portray it as a kind of field of. of of energy, but not just energy. It's an intelligence and a spirit that is that that is the this is this is the its visible expression and appearing out of its. It gives many clues. Just if you look, you know, we look on someone, we see the hair on their head, which keeps coming out. We're coming out from what? If you look inside the head, there's no hair inside the head coming out. There's nothing there. It's just growing. To show you that out of emptiness I create all these things, mm-hmm. and and sustain them, and bring them back to emptiness. You know, this is it's too magnificent to talk about it. You know, and some beings that just get overwhelmed at just the, the majesty of that power. So that 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 power is the is the is the source of your own sense of self. To even know this, even if you don't understand that. That should set your life on fire already. You, 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 you should have to go down and sit down. And just there is no end to a gratitude of knowing that your life is sourced in God. For someone who don't really comprehend that, yeah. also that is designated by the power that there will be beings who don't feel that for a while, and then eventually they must wake up to that in themselves. So an auspicious life for me. Is the life that moves away from the ego, which creates a blindness inside the being, and make us just, you know, be concerned about earthly things, and uh, as opposed to the one who is aware and living in that awareness, and then living as that awareness. If you come to live as awareness, you are already in the in the kingdom. You are already in that space. In fact, it's even, I would say, greater than heaven. If I can say something like that, because when that feeling came, you know, I just thought, is that blasphemous? Is it? No, I felt as if heaven is of images and objects and so on, then they are also in time, in a kind of in a kind of time. It may be one of God's days could be a thousand of human, you know, could be a thousand years. Well, who knows? But well, whatever it is, it is has to be changed. If there are different levels of beings and so on, you know, this, then of course there's there's still the. The process of evolving and, and growing is still there, but in the pure awareness, it's like it's it's it it's not concerned about growth. It is so perfect. It's so perfect, you know? but it's so unappealing to the mind because the mind is always concerned about things and objects and and having and losing and getting and changing and growing and becoming and losing and you know it's all of that. Whereas in awareness, it's like. It is transcendental to, to such concepts, and this is what I'm trying to, you know, when I say to everyone, leave this now, leave this now, leave even the concern for your identity, leave all of this. Who am I speaking to? To the intelligence that don't hear this enough, and when it hears this command that comes from the heart, it's able to drop everything and then be in the oneness 
in the experience of its own oneness, you see. And then it's not, you see, really people in the, in the, in the, in the hall in satsang, in the meditations like this and the guidances like this, you see. Then the disturbance is not there. You know, it's, it's like it's, you're in a transcendental plane. Selfishness and all this kind of stuff, it just kind of thins away. And it's as though you're floating in a, in a, in a, in a, in a lighter mm, mm, dimension you know, of being. So it's, it's very tangible, actually, that we, we feel it and we have the capacity to experience it. In the beginning, for many people, their mind comes. You can see sometimes people come here, they're not used to this type of environment, and you see how much their mind is troubling them. It appears as though it's the place that's troubling them, and the people are troubling them, but it's their own mind is troubling them. You know, it feels uncomfortable because it feels challenged. You know, why are these people so happy about what? You know, I mean, I don't even trust them. They're pretending. You know, it goes into overdrive on on this cynicism, judgments, on discomfort. All these things come up, but they are just the the birth pains to. To reach a higher state of calm, if they persist, but and often they don't, they go away. But something is inside, and that seed begins to to grow, to grow inside there. Because God brought them here, even if they feel well, I didn't want to come here. My wife came here, so it's still the force that caused them to come here. The force causes them to experience the disturbance that's in them, but they don't recognize that it's coming from them. They think it's coming from outside, but it's coming from a reaction. To the energy that they're experiencing, that they're not yet compatible with it, because they're so much in the domain of egoic identity. So that's that is shaking, you know. So a very good question you gave me this morning. What it means to be egoless. It means life. You know, like like true life. When we think of Jesus or uh, Prophet Muhammad or uh, Krishna or the Buddha or something, you know. It immediately is a high, even people don't know about this thing. They know it's, they know it represents a higher, a higher level of consciousness, a level where 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 love is the climate and you know peace and you know. So, but when we say I, the implication, the real meaning of I, is consciousness. But rarely in the world, when we say I, it means consciousness. It's meaning individuality, it meaning person, it meaning, you know, I'm a man, I'm a woman. It's such a contracted, such a limitation. You see? But I, even if we sometimes, even the one who is awake, will say I, knowing that it's referring to a sense of individuality and so on. But underneath that I is a deeper, they're in that space of a deeper. Mm, uh, Knowing a spiritual knowing that uh, it is consciousness speaking, you know, and not the person. It's a to- different uh, vibration altogether. Uh, when you are with someone and when they speak, you experience spaciousness. And that I is the I that comes from consciousness. That is consciousness. When you feel you are speaking with someone and you've got to be careful what you say, and that I is loaded with personhood. And you can see, you know, the person can the the a world full of uh, earth full of personhood is a very suffocating place, stifling, you know. Even if there was only you know three million people on the earth, it would feel st- well probably that's no, that's a small number, but when you meet them, you'd feel a bit suffocated. But uh, one human being who is awake to the self in a crowd of thousands. Uh, shine and illumines that you know raise the the, the the level of consciousness in people who recognize it you know because something in us recognize can recognize that you're standing in a higher presence you know? that's what what happens there yeah. because even without being told people start to behave differently to someone who is awake, they just behave. They, they, they can't help it. They behave differently without knowing consciously. Oh, that person is some. No, no. Just they behave differently. They may start in the beginning by being, you know, that's just treating like oh, just regular thing. 
but gradually the, the, the presence begin to, you know, sort of um, percolate and to kind of move more deeply inside you. And it, it changes them. They, they, their climate start to change. They start to feel more kind, more open. They want to do things for you. Want, it's like that. That's without knowing anything about spirituality. It is commanded in the world. That's when one of the adiths of the prophets say um, that when God created the world, it says that God commanded the world, whole world, serve those who serve me. Meaning, those who are searching for truth, serve them, and make weary and tired those who serve you. You understand? It's a powerful thing. Mm-hmm. Serve those who serve me. Meaning, serve those. Take care of them who who honor God and truth. Make tired those who serve you, who serve the world. Make them tired. Is that a curse? No. It's a blessing also, mm-hmm. because when you get tired of your of your own rubbish, then maybe there's space finally to say, you know what, I've got to try something different. This is make weary those who serve you, because what their service is in vain. It's like just serving matter and not spirit. So it's a beautiful. It's it's written inside the heart, in the DNA of every living being, not just human being, but in the presence of one who venerates the truth. Uh, something in them will honor them. It will respond to them. It may even at first want to get rid of them, but it cannot deny that their presence has an impact upon the existence. That is the power of the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of Truth in each one. And I say, this place has to has to shine in that. It has to, as long as I'm here, you know. It has to be that our focus. Is on you know cutting the ego, and not just cutting cutting ego, but living in the truth. Because if your life is only trying to cut 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 ego, maybe you don't even taste the full joy. You know, you're too busy trying to cut ego. But I say, but I'm showing you the truth also. In the meantime, so as you are you know, you know you are cutting trying to cut ego, you find the truth. You put down your cutter and just rejoice in the truth and let truth cut the ego. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? Yes. Yeah, the truth cut the ego. Why your hands have to cut the ego? You see? That's what the invitation does. That's what yes. the invitation does. The invitation <laughs> takes all the, the dirty work, the grime and stuff out of it and brings you into the lap of God. <laughs> yeah. For this I, my heart is so happy. Because you know, I you know, like sometimes when you see the beings, and they are, if I, if somebody comes and says, "I'm so thirsty, can I have a glass of water?" You give them a glass of water. If somebody falls down, you say, "Oh, brother, come, 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 let's get up." Even though your back is hurting, you help them up. And, How are you feeling now? Feel better? Come sit down in the chair, sit down. You help them. No? Somebody's hungry, brother, please. You give them something to eat, hmm? and. Uh, Whatever you can do, you, you you help, no? Then if they are sick, what are you going to do? You have to be able. Something must be in you to help them also. Whether it's prayer, or you 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 start to learn to bless people, even if it doesn't work, you still do it. You you still keep doing it, you know. My intention is to bless their life, to give them, you know, not that their life become like mine. No, just bless their life that whatever it needs to be, you know, to to remove the obstacles, to remove whatever it is that is contaminating or creating. You know, disfiguring their their the, the the spontaneity of their life. You know, you know, to 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 banish that by the power of God. You bless them or something. And with this, also people are searching. They're so searching for the truth. They can't find it so difficult. I say, yeah, no. I say, okay. You read the invitation. Listen to this. Just listen to it. Just listen to it. Okay. And that is the big help they can get. So my God, I was getting ready to do all this gymnastics to try and get over these things, and you've made it so easy. Something has become so easy, you know. I didn't have to go through my mind. I didn't have to go down into the, into this, you know, this dark place of myself. I just I came to the light place of myself like that. Isn't that a wonderful thing, you know? Why everybody have to suffer blood, sweat, and tears, and they can't do it because. The human beings are getting weaker. 
because uh, they want everything to be done by machines. You know, we don't want to. So even the work of working ourselves on ourselves, yes, if it's to make, if it's to build your ego, we'll do it. We'll lift every weight so, to build up ego, but to change into to to transform your heart from a suffering place into a place into the abode of peace. Yeah, man, I can't get into that and stuff because they feel it doesn't show, you know, like this. So perhaps this is why maybe Grace brought invitation now to say, you know, but you have to also come in. You know, you think you're happy, but that's not real happiness, you know. And to try to get them, I feel this is there must be because why it didn't for me. It's an invitation is the easiest thing. It's like someone holding your hand and walking you through the door. Come, let's go. Let's go to this door. You know, I want to meet Jesus. Come with me and show you. I'll take you right here. Come, just a minute. Come, let's walk through the door here inside. You know, I was gonna go to Jerusalem. I was gonna go to Calvary. No, no, he's right here. Come, come, come. right here. Walk you through the door. Isn't it? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Father, take me away, take me away.